together this death guard space marine now this is a quick project so i actually started it several months ago uh, but it's been sitting on the shelf for ages now um, sort of half finished however i've reached a sort of a not exactly a roadblock but a pause in my previous project so which is the video i posted um, recently prior to this one um, and while i sort of ponder where to go with that one i thought i'd just do a quick project um, to sort of uh, take my mind off it help me think through the problems um, so this is so this is a bit of a palette cleanser if you will um, so i thought I pick this back up off the shelf and uh, finally finish it. So it's been sitting there staring at me for quite a while. So this is actually a custom version of my previous Space Marine uh, project that I put together, uh, which you may recall. Um, and I've always loved Death Guard. They look really, really cool. So I wanted to um, have a go at converting that Space Marine into a Death Guard Space Marine. So that's what we've got here. So in this video, we're going to be looking at putting this together and also going through the painting process as well. So let's get started. So this piece started life as another version of the Space Marine sculpture that I'd made previously. And if you've seen that video, you know that I pressure cast the pieces for that sculpture. And so what I've got is a variety of pieces here which are from the original project. And I can use these to build my Death Guard Space Marine. Now for those unfamiliar, Death Guard are a, a type of Chaos Space Marine. What they are is um, sort of mutated Space Marines basically and they've got lots of really crazy sort of um, growths and uh, mutations. And I really love the sculptures that the uh, miniatures for the game have. Obviously all of these miniatures are really their sculptures aren't they, you know, they're little statues. And so someone somewhere has modelled these in 3D and you know put a lot of time and attention uh, to adding all of these details and I just think the sculpts and the, um, the level of design in these things is really really cool. You know, so I, I've, I've painted a bunch of these but uh, this is the one I'm sort of going to be using as a basis. I just really like this sculpture so I want to just basically do a larger version of it. So all I'm doing is cutting out some acrylic and what I'm going to be doing is sanding this down to create these uh, crazy big sort of antlers that are growing out of his head. This is a technique that I've only used a little bit um, previously but I quite like this. So the idea is you just get some really thick acrylic, cut the basic shape that you want out then start sanding it into a curved shape. You can then deform it even further by heating it and bending it. I think it's quite a nice way of creating sort of horns or teeth and things like that. So I'm using a heat gun here just to bend it sort of away from a flat plane so there's a bit more dimensionality to the shape. So something else that I also made for the original sculpture was this Space Marine helmet. In the end, the Marine that I made had a bare head, but I did incorporate the helmet into the base for that sculpture. But the um, original helmet that I made has been knocking about for a while, and I never actually made a mould of it for the original piece, but I've done that this time. So what I've done is to make a mould of this uh, master, and I've cast that up in black resin. Now this was actually an example of me using powder instead of pressure casting to um, to uh, get my casts. So what I did was to pour in some black powder, some graphite powder into the mould. And um, as you can see, I can't see a single air bubble on this. So uh, powdering the mould really does help. Um, I would have got loads of air bubbles in the grill in the face in this, I think, and on some of the corners if I hadn't used powder. But in this case I have and it's come out really, really well. So um, it's a really nice technique and it's actually quite a time saving technique because pressure casting, although it gets nice results, is a bit of a faff really. You've got to get the chamber out, you know, pressure it, pressure it up, you know, do all that stuff. So this is a much quicker, easier way of getting nice casts. So I find that quite useful in this project. So I've got the cast of my helmet. So I'm going to glue my big antler horn thing on the side here. Now as you can see with the sculpture that I'm basing my uh, my piece on, the face is actually quite far removed from a Space Marine helmet. You know, he's got three eyes, he's got a massive tongue coming out the front, he's got all these teeth and antlers and stuff. So there's not much that's recognisably Space Marine uh, there in the head. So what I'm going to do is actually sculpt over the Space Marine helmet and sort of basically use it as a basis on which to sculpt. So there's not going to be much that's recognisable once I'm done. 
uh, but that's fine. So what I'm doing is grabbing some Sculpey here and just pushing this all over the um, Space Marine helmet. I'm going to start sculpting this up into something approaching the uh, the design of the, uh, of the miniature. Now what I've done is to roll out some uh, teeth um, in Sculpey and cook those in advance. So it's quite useful to have uh, teeth and horns and things like that, uh, which would naturally be hard, um, pre-cooked um, ahead of time, so that you can just push them into the soft Sculpey and you can sculpt against them and they won't deform. So I'm just pushing some of these teeth into the soft Sculpey, trying to build up the uh, the look of the, uh, of the marine that I'm basing this on. You can also do this with epoxy or something like that as well. So there's a few ways of doing this, but in this case I've used Sculpey. So that's not looking too bad, I think. Now the cool thing is, obviously, this is a larger sculpture than the miniature that I'm basing it on, so I can add a hell of a lot more detail into this. So I'm being fairly loose with it. I'm not trying to replicate it exactly, but I just want to sort of um, have the basic look of the miniature. So I think that's looking pretty good as a first pass on the face. I've also made an additional um, horn here as well, so I'm just going to glue that on the opposite side of the head as well. Now I also need to attach the shoulder pads to the model, and these are some of the more sort of recognisable aspects of a Space Marine, and the Death Guard incorporate these too, so I just need to make sure that they're attached. Now in the original model I made these smaller shoulder pieces that the uh, shoulder pads could sit on, so I'm just going to glue these in place. And that then gives the shoulder pads something to sit on. Now in the original miniature the shoulder pads are completely mutated and, and sort of distorted, and on one of them there's a face growing out of the um, shoulder pad, and there's also a horn that sort of pushed its way through the shoulder pad. So what I'm going to do is create another horn out of acrylic and what I'm going to do is to push that through the shoulder pad. So I'm just sanding this down um, to a nice smooth finish. And what I can now do is come to the shoulder pad and you can see I've drilled a hole in this already. What I'm doing is heating this with a heat gun and that's going to make the resin really really soft. So what I can now do is push the horn through from behind and hopefully get some nice uh, realistic cracking and distortion on the shoulder pad. Sorry, almost got this off camera, but you can sort of see what's going on there. So that's pushing through from behind. And um, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I've got some nice cracks showing. Uh, a few pieces fell off as it came through, but I can glue those back on. But I think that looks quite nice as a realistic piece of cracking and distortion. So I can now just glue the horn in place, so that's all one piece now. So I actually took a bit of a break in this sculpture, so a couple of months have passed between the previous shot and this one. Um, but as you can see, I've sculpted up a large belly section, sort of an armour plate um, for this with like a mouth thing growing out the side. And this is something that's quite distinctive to the Death Guard Space Marines. And this had been sitting on a shelf for a while, um, uncooked, so the sculpty was still soft. And what I had been doing is just basically putting the whole thing in the oven uh, to cook it. But I didn't really want to do that again, so I started thinking, well, how can I how can I cook the sculpey? And I remembered that I've used a heat gun previously to do this. So I started cooking it with a heat gun and I, I accidentally burnt it as I was doing so. And that prompted me to remember that if you burn Sculpey, you can actually get it to sort of bubble up with some really cool sort of lumps. Um, and a while back, I made this uh, bat creature, which is actually one of the first video series I did on the channel. Um, I did a bust version of this, and the original idea of the sculpture was that I was going to use a heat gun to burn some Sculpey and give the Sculpey a really nice sort of textured um, sort of... Uh, lumpy look. I thought it would be really cool for a creature. Um, as I sculpted the creature it didn't really work out. The creature looked quite angelic and I didn't think this sort of a burnt lumpy skin texture would really work for it. But nevertheless I thought it was a really cool technique and I've always thought I should use that on a sculpture. So um, when I came to do this I suddenly remembered that and thought okay that's great because the uh, sculptures of the Death Guard often have sort of boils and pustules and things like that incorporated in, into the armour which doesn't make a lot of sense of course but it kind of looks cool so I thought well okay if I burn the, the Sculpey here I can actually recreate that look um, in the Sculpey with almost next to no effort so that's what I did so as you can see here and um, the Sculpey is super burnt but it's all bubbled up and giving it this really really cool texture 
So I've put some undercoat on this um, just so I can see it without the uh, the burnt coloration. And as you can see, it's got a really nice texture here. So that was sort of a, a happy accident really with the Sculpey. Uh, but I think that's come out really, really well. So I'm really happy with that. So I've taken some epoxy and I've um, continued with my shoulder pad. Um, as I mentioned, the, the uh, shoulder pad on the original miniature has a face growing out of it. So I've tried to replicate something like that um, here. Uh, it actually, I think, looks a little bit like something from the Labyrinth, maybe Ludo or one of those characters. But uh, I, I think that's really cool. I'm, I'm quite happy with the way that looks. There's, there's an element of comedy to the, to the Warhammer Marines, particularly the Death Guard and the Orcs. I think tend to be um, have some quite humorous little bits in there, like sort of um, crazy gremlin faces and things like like that so I've sculpted a face on one shoulder pad and some additional detail on the other here as well just using epoxy to do that now something that I also wanted to do was have a uh, space marine helmet impaled on a spike on the guy's armor I've seen that on various other uh, Warhammer chaos marines as well I thought it's quite a nice little detail and because I've got the mold I can produce as many space marine helmets as I want so I thought I'll, do, I'll use the same technique as I did for the armor panel I'll um, hollow this out uh, make the resin thin then I'll heat it up and push a spike through from below and that should give me some nice splitting um, detail uh, which would be quite difficult to, to sculpt I think so this should look quite realistic Right, so I'm just going to push this piece of acrylic through from below. Yeah, there you go, looking, looking pretty good I think. Um, it, once again, another piece uh, fell off, but I can glue that back on. But I think that's going to look quite nice mounted on his backpack. Okay, so I need to add some additional detail to the uh, backpack uh, power plant thing. So I'm just going to use some additional resin pieces that I've made for previous models. So this is something from a mech that I made a while back. So I think this is going to look quite cool on the side. Uh, the Death Guard often have these sort of crazy steampunk pipe type extrusions coming off the power plants. So I thought I'd do something similar here. They also have these uh, sort of balls with um, holes drilled in them. I'm quite sure what they're meant to be, but you often see them on the power packs or embedded in their armour. So I thought I would try and replicate that as well uh, using this um, cast I've had in the box for ages. Now they often have some um, sort of, uh, I don't know what it is, some additional mechanical detail anyway over them. So I've bent a piece of acrylic here and I'm going to glue that on top. Okay, so there we go. So getting pretty close to finished I think and uh, the bit I'm really looking forward to is painting so I'm starting to think now about the paint job and how this will look and something I want to do is to use some crackle paint um, so Games Workshop do a type of paint that when you paint it on it will crack and it's often used for bases and things like that but what I want to do is because I've got all of this detail on the chest and the belly uh, with all these sort of lumps um, the rest of the model doesn't really have any texture on it you know apart from the sort of crack bits I've put in and um, the rest of it's sort of flat panel so what I want to do is paint this on and have some crackle sections so it should look like the paint has um, cracked once it's dry and once I've painted over it it should add some nice um, texture to the other pieces of the model okay so the crackle paint is now dried and as you can see we've got a really nice texture to that so that's looking really really good that's gonna look really cool once we get some washes and oil paints over that and as you can see on this one, I've given it an additional layer of undercoat, so it blends together. And I think that's looking really good. I can't see a join between the, uh, the crackle paint and the rest of it. So it's quite a nice blend, I think. And it really adds some nice texture to, to the flat panels of this piece. So I've gone ahead and added some additional crackle paint to the rest of this. Um, and I've now given that an additional layer of undercoat as well. So that's now looking pretty good, I think. Uh, so I can now move on to painting. So what I want to do is have a nice chipped paint job on this. Uh, the Death Guard are all weathered and beaten up and rusty and dirty and you know um, all that stuff. So I want to have a um, really chipped look. The armor I think is meant to be well, I guess forty thousand years old, right? It's why they're forty thousand. So it's going to be all beaten up. So what I'm going to do is do a chipping effect on this. So I'm spray painting the model with a base coat of dark dark brown basically with a touch of red to it so it's going to be a sort of a almost like a rust layer basically which will show through from below I've also come in with a bit of black as well and just given a bit of shading to it too 
So what I'm now doing is giving it a layer of chipping medium. Uh, so what you do is you spray this all over the area that you want to chip, uh, which in my case is basically the entire model. Um, and I think you're meant to let it dry first. I don't really tend to. I sort of give it like, you know, 10, 20 minutes or so, but then just come in with my um, top layer. So I've got the chipping medium all over this and I'm now coming in with a lighter green layer, which is gonna be the top layer of paint. What you do is uh, you let it dry, and then you can chip the top layer away to reveal the layer underneath. So what I'm doing here is giving it a top coat of light green. I'm just coming in with a variety of different shades of green just to give it a bit of variety. What I'm also doing is coming with a bit of red as well. So I've got this sort of mouth section that's growing out of his stomach. So I need that to look a little bit more fleshy. Um, also for the tongue on his face as well. So I'm just giving them a sort of a very quick base coat of red um, just to make that a little bit more organic. And same thing with the shoulder pad too. Okay, so now the fun part. So what I've got here is some water, and I'm just brushing that over the uh, over the paint job. And what you can do is, as the water soaks in, it starts loosening the uh, top layer of paint. You can then come in with stuff like a toothbrush or a paintbrush or a toothpick, things like that. And you can start scraping away the paint to reveal the base coat below. So this is really just a bit of trial and error, really, and you want that randomness. So I try and sort of mix it up a bit and try and use a variety of techniques. I generally found that just using the large paintbrush was enough to, to chip this quite well. Just kind of keep whacking it with the um, almost in a stippling motion. And that really, um, really gave me a good effect with the paint chipping off. So um, this is this is great fun and probably my favorite part of the paint job. I found the more more water you add to it, the more loose the paint becomes. And if you really want a proper peeled paint effect, what I found a one minute charge painting is if you submerge the entire thing in a pot of water and just leave it, the paint actually starts peeling off. So you can get a really nice sort of weathered sort of aged look to it. It is quite delicate, but nevertheless, you can get quite a nice look to it. So it's really worth experimenting with this stuff to see what you can get. As you can see here, that's looking pretty good, so I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm moving on to the backpack and, and using the same technique to try and chip that as well. And as you can see, I'm just sort of whacking the uh, the backpack with the end of the brush in a kind of a stippling motion. Uh, but that's giving me a really nice chipping effect. I think the technique with this is to really have small chips. Um, there's a section on the front of the model which kind of came off in a really large patch. It's not a huge problem, but it tends to look a little bit less realistic, I think, because you know the chipping is going to occur when the armor bangs into things over the years, you know, and so the paint's chipped off or just through natural weathering over the years. But I don't think that sort of thing generally happens in large chunks. I think it more naturally happens in small sections. So the smaller the detail, I think the better, and that tends to sell the scale as well a little bit better so yeah I really just went over the whole model and added chipping um, where I needed it if I couldn't quite get the paint off I'd come in with a toothpick and scratch at it as well and after a while I got to a point where I was really happy with it. and obviously with these sorts of models they're meant to be really beaten up and weathered so it really works for this particular type of model maybe less so for others but um, you know it's kind of up to you how, how crazy you go with it I always tend to go a bit overboard with the weathering but that's just because it's one of the more fun aspects of doing the paint job Right, so that's looking pretty good, I think. He's got a nice level of weathering over the entire model um, and on the shoulder pads too. So pretty happy with that. And as you can see, I've got my cracked paint in there as well, and I think that blends together really nicely with the uh, chip paint. So we've got a nice variety of uh, textures over the entire model. So what I'm now going to do is use some varnish to seal the whole paint job. I've got to a point where I'm quite happy with, so I want to sort of finalise that before I move on and put additional layers of paint over the top. So this just helps protect it basically and sort of finalise that, that particular effect. Now this is a bit shiny, but that's fine. I'm going to be coming in with a variety of other paints on top of it, so that shine will go away pretty quickly. So the first step is to give everything a base of uh, white uh, where it's needed. All of the organic sections I want to sort of slowly build up with washes. So I've, um, I've covered those in white too, um, as with horns as well, and the uh, skull motif on the shoulder pad. So for the organic bits, I can now come in with some thin layers of red. And this is just watered down Games Workshop uh, washes. And I just sort of whack a bunch of these on and sort of slowly start building it up. Once 
what I'm now doing is coming in with something from AK Interactive, which is called Streaking Grime. Now, um, there's a variety of companies that do washes and things like that. Games Workshop do a bunch of water-based washes. Um, Agrex Earthshade is a, is a popular one. It's a sort of a browny, dirty kind of um, thing that you brush it over your model and it goes into all the details and sort of gives it a, the uh, the model a bit of contrast. The AK Interactive stuff's a little bit thicker and it's actually enamel-based, so you have to use white spirits, or mineral spirits, um, as they're often called, uh, to get rid of it. So what I'm doing here is covering the whole model in a layer of streaking grime laying it dry and then I'm coming back in with a cotton bud and some white spirits and removing it and what that's going to do is give this whole thing a level of um, dirt all over the model that will sort of sink into the details of the piece and really highlight all that texture that I've put in. So as you can see as I brush away at this it slowly gets removed but the um, a lot of it's left in the details. So that just sort of adds a degree of contrast and dirt and grime to it and yeah, just, I kind of add it to everything if I'm honest, it just makes everything look cool no matter what you add it to. And it's particularly appropriate here because so these guys are meant to be all dirty and, and messed up. Now something that I often do with Death Guard miniatures is to have glowing eyes, so I want to do the same here. So I've got the um, two regular eyes of the Space Marine, he's got like a third which is sort of uh, cracked. Uh, the armour and appeared in his forehead. So I'm going to put some uh, it's called Tesseract Glow, which is a really bright uh, green, uh, which Games Workshop do. So I'm using that for the eyes. And I'm also slowly building up the organic section. So what I'm doing is adding some glazes to some lumpy bits to make them look a bit like boils. I've also used some oils on the organic sections as well, some light blues to sort of uh, break up the reds. And I think that really adds a degree of um, organic sort of... Um, gooeyness to these, so I think they're looking quite, quite cool. Now the cool thing with Tesseract Glow is you can actually dry brush it around an area where you've used it and that adds a degree of uh, what they call OSL, so object source lighting. So the idea is that you're painting on a lighting effect onto the model. So the idea is that his eyes are glowing and so they'll change the, uh, the colour values of the areas around them to be more green. So you can actually dry brush this Tesseract Glow on top of your model and that gives it a, a sort of a, a lighting look as though the eyes are glowing. So um, I'm no expert at this but it, it does say so certainly add a certain something to it. I've seen some really cool OSL effects on models so um, I want to I try and do a bit more of this but yeah this, this does add a certain something to it I think. Now what also I want to do is make the glow of the green even higher so what I'm going to do is use this stuff which is a fluorescent green powder so I'm just using a humble matte coat which is like a, uh, a paint base basically with no pigment in it and I'm going to pigment it with this powder and this is a really really bright green so I'm just going to dab a bit of that in the centre of the eyes to add an additional glow to them. Now another favourite part of the paint job uh, for me is once I've got these sort of acrylic base coats done is to come in with some oil paints and start adding those to add some additional um, detail to the model. Now in this case I'm using some rust colours to imply corrosion over the model and I think they give a really nice contrast to the greens so they're kind of orangey reds and they really help to add a degree of um, variation to the colour scheme. And I think they, yeah, they contrast really really nicely so I think they look really really cool and obviously they make sense that they're there because the whole thing's rusting and, and beaten up. The cool thing is you don't have to be particularly precise with these, I just use like messed up brushes where the bristles are all over the place, but that's great because it adds a degree of randomness to it, it doesn't look too um, unnatural. Um, so I really enjoy doing this because you can sort of get some nice gradients of colour. Oils are quite nice, um, quite easy to feather, so you can get some quite nice blends between the base coat in the acrylics and the highlights that you're adding in with the oils. So I'm also adding in some more, uh, more rust colours here and just adding some streaking rust coming down from this sort of junction port thing. Now something else I quite like doing is to add a uh, contrast of corrosion colours. So here I've got a really nice sort of turquoisey blue uh, coming from the copper and the brass uh, metals. So they've corroded to that, to that sort of turquoise colour. And I've also got some oranges coming from the iron that I guess the shard pad is made from. But I really like the contrast between those colours so it's quite nice to do a sort of gradient between them. As it adds a sort of a, um, a degree of uh, visual interest to the piece and, and a variation in the basic colour scheme. 
you know this sort of color scheme because it's so weathered and beaten up could potentially look quite drab but when you have all these corrosion um, colors in and these organic shapes it actually ends up being really really colorful which is a, a look that i really really like now I did have this piece on the backpack, um, which is sort of accurate to how the miniatures look, but I think I just made it a little bit too big, it was sort of sticking out a little bit for me. So what I've actually done is to replace this with a skull instead, with a similar colour scheme. And the final step with this is to add a layer of varnish um, onto the organic section, just to make them a bit shiny and gross. Uh, what I've done here is to use my satin varnish that I used to seal the uh, previous paint layers. But what I did afterwards was to come in with some clear nail varnish. That stuff's really, really glossy. That really gives you a nice organic look uh, to, to pieces like this. So that really works, I think. Okay, so there we go. So like I said, this one was a bit of a, a bit of a palette cleanser, really. I sort of reached a point in my previous sculpture where I was a little bit stuck as to where to go with it. And this had been sitting on the shelf for a while. So I thought, well, let's let's spend a day or two just working on that. You know, take my mind off the previous project and give that room to breathe. And this will give me a nice little thing which I can spend a few days on and, uh, and actually complete. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way this came out, actually. Um, painting this sort of stuff is always great fun. And any sort of weathered uh, paint scheme, um, I, just, I just love doing. So yeah, yeah, really, uh, really fun uh, little project, and I uh, hope this was interesting. Uh, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.